things across the organizers. Like me to introduce this at all. Um, and also to say soluble mitochondrial enzymes such as acolytase. When frataxin is lacking, this pathway doesn't work correctly because iron is not presented correctly to this machinery. Then, what happens is that iron accumulates free in the mitochondria or trapped with ferritin as we saw just before. And this iron is now possibly the source of radical oxygen species through the phantom chemistry. <coughs> And this result in the more um, this, this result in, in destabilization, further destabilization of iron superclusters. And from this from this uh, story, I would say about uh, fatigue function, is reflected in the very preliminary observation that was did in the that was done in the 1997, I would say, that in patient with the major enzyme defect is the aconitase enzyme that is strongly defective. N nearly 90% defect in, in, in these enzymes, which is something that I ask you to, to remember. This is the very first target in this disease. And when you treat the patient, by the way, with idebenon, you see that you recover part of these enzymes while it is not written here, you, you cover all the other online activity, showing that probably there is two, the two, two pathways at this time that result in a quantitative deficiency is first the, the, the impaired synthesis of the iron sulfur cluster for aconitase, and also the destabilization of the iron sulfur cluster through the free radical uh, pathway, and this <coughs> explains why Idebenon restores the activity of the enzyme. Since the beginning, also we have the idea that there is this type of vicious cycle that is at the origin of the disease. Which, you know, when, when fataxin is low, there is all these three factors that, that, are, that can be identified with iron sulfur cluster deficiency, iron accumulation, and oxidative stress. So three phenomena seems to be closely and intimately related, and it's very difficult to order this three phenomenon, which may be prominent in some phase of the disease and secondary in other phases, depending on the time dependence. The problem we have, in fact, to dissect the mechanism is that we do not have very good model. We have very efficient tools, and we all of us know the number of, of models that have been uh, created in particular in, in Strasbourg and we have participated to the characterization of this model so we know that there have been very useful tools to understand what does for vaccine but there is one thing is sure that the situation where you have no vaccine <coughs> is another story than the situation in humans where you have low vaccine. For example the typical thing is that when you've got no vaccine you've got very low or nearly or no response activity which means that you do not have oxidative stress, or strong oxidative stress. By the way, the same observation can be made with rho zero cell. It is cells without mitochondria. In these cells, you do not have oxidative stress. So the, the respiratory chain has to be present to some extent to have this oxidative stress. Um, the same is true for the iron accumulation, which is a late phenomenon, also um, uh, as um, Ellen uh, showed just uh, before there is some evidence of that. So we recently had one, 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 one success in obtaining cells who do present all the biochemical hallmarks that we know in patients. We have treated SKNIS cells, which are neuron derived cells from a neuroblastoma. And these cells have been treated with SHRNI, so genetic tool to, to, to turn down the heart vaccine. These, these cells who have a clear iron sulfur protein deficiency, a partial defect of the respiratory chain, and show all the sign of oxidative stress. And as you can see here, for example, for the aconitase activity, it's about 30 to 40 percent of the activity. The aconitase is there, the measurement of the enzyme. You see here the control, here is the aconitase. 
He has another enzyme we use as a mechanosis, the isocytate dehydrogenase. And you look here, you can get an uh, idea of the activity of aconitase, which represents about 30 to 40 percent of the activity. And other enzymes also containing either sulfur clusters are deficient. So we were quite interested to use this cell, in fact, to test the different ID we had 10 years ago in terms of therapy. And so, very long time ago, at the very beginning, we, we sought to use either chelation, iron chelation or antioxidants. And all of you know that there is this new generation of, of, of iron chelators that targets iron in the mitochondria. At the start, there have been ideas coming from Australia, mostly, that iron chelators should be used in fetal mm -hmm. but this has been turned off for a while. And, but the, the things came back when this new uh, uh, iron chelator have been discovered. But it came to my mind that if you are able to efficiently bind iron in the mitochondria and take it out of the mitochondria, you will clearly protect mitochondrial targets from iron negative effect. But at the same time, if you decrease iron or empty the mitochondria from iron, mm -hmm. you will have a second phenomenon, hardly escapable, which is you will impair the synthesis of the iron sulfur cluster and of the double heat. So we test for that <coughs> and we, we use several types of cells. Here it's called uh, skin fibroblast from control. And we use deferipone. Concentration was 150 micromolar. And as you see, in one day, you lose about half of the activity of the conitase. And in seven days, it's 25% residual activity. The same is true in control or in fibroblast attack. Fibroblast, you remember that fibroblast uh, fibroblasts do not differ from control in terms of phenotypes. Well, they've got some difference, but in terms of iron sulfur cluster protein activity, it's the same. But what is clear is that if you treat this cell with the ferripone, you lose the activity of the aconitase. And if you look at the, what it, the, the ferripone does to the cell, if you grow the cell in the, pre, in the absence of uh, of this report, you see the proliferation. In seven, seven days, the, 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 the box is full of cells. They are adjacent. If you got this report in the system, the cell do not grow at all. The same is true for patient cells, which grow more or less happily, but the growth is totally erased with this report, and the same is true for the second patient. So that was in fibro.